Hello and welcome to the channel and in today's video we are going to check out this custom out of a Marvel Legends action figure um, and it's my custom of a Carol Danvers Miss Marvel. Um, I, as of this recording uh, we know that there will be a Target exclusive that will be releasing uh, sometime this summer. Um, and previously there was a release that was a Walmart exclusive, I want to say like five years ago or something like that, four or five years ago. And it was available on a uh, three pack. And having a updated Miss Marvel, uh, or, you know, as she's also called in this form, Warbird. Um, it was long overdue, especially now that uh, Hasbro is updating the uh, female body buck. So the first release of the Miss Marvel figure had an older mold. Uh, like I said, no, it's very outdated for well, for at the time it was I would guess somewhat new. But, you know, by today's standards, it's very outdated. And they're the new version, they're using some of the new uh, features like a nap crunch and all of that. Uh, also a, um, a shoulder swivel. And all that. I'll post some pictures, uh, you know, for comparison. Uh, but uh, so this custom, uh, I have been thinking of doing a custom Miss Marvel. For a while now I just didn't have like the right body and figure to do it with uh, for those who don't know but you know I've mentioned a few times I don't really collect Marvel Legends just because the line is at this point you know so advanced you know it's been going since what the early 2010s so there's a lot of figures to go back and to collect and some of those figures are you know kind of expensive in the secondary market and all that so I would only collect you know there are figures that I like or um, well characters that I like that I would like to have as an action figure for my collection but again the uh, the, the line is you know so extensive and you know going back and trying to you know collect all of those older figures it just didn't look feasible for me so i'm glad that they're redoing several old figures in the newer body box so for instance the x-men so thanks to the um announcement and eventual release of the x-men 97 uh animated series they are re-releasing, well not re-releasing, but they're releasing new versions of the X-Men, you know, with ties to that uh, series. So they're releasing the X-Men 97 line. Um, so that's my gateway for collecting X-Men figures in the Marvel Legends line. And I've got a, you know, I've been able to grab a few of those. Um... I'll post a, uh, an update on one of those because I've already done some modifications. But um, but anyway, so back to Warbird. So Warbird, again, is one of those older figures that needed, needs updating and one of those characters that I wanted to, to have because uh, visually she is a very cool looking character uh, and also the character itself is fairly interesting. You know, I'm not going to lie here and say I know all of the history of the character, but um, during the, what was it, after Heroes Reborn, when, um, uh, I'll post an image of the comic, uh, where uh, I believe Kurt Busiek and George Perez took over Avengers after Heroes Reborn, you know, 98, 99, something like that, um, and uh, she was featured in the comic. Uh, so that was like my first major exposure to the character, and her, you know, um, 
you know, her ups and downs as an alcoholic and all of that. And, you know, I knew she was also, um, you know, obviously the ties to the X-Men with Rogue and Rogue stealing her powers. But again, I didn't know much of the character then to understand uh, her plight and all of that. So, and then f after that, she was brought in as part of the new Avengers, I believe, in the 2000s with Ryan Bendis, or was that afterwards? I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. Um, if it, uh, it was around the uh, Civil War, yeah, it was around this the first Civil War uh, miniseries. So she was brought in as part of to be to lead the Avengers. So I was saying uh, she was brought in to lead the Avengers. Um, one of the Avengers team, I forget it was just the standard Avengers or the new Avengers. Um, but she was brought in to be one of the leaders. Um, and um, the uh, that depiction of her, uh, you know, struck with me as uh, obviously, and again, I'll post some reference images. Uh, she was drawn by, uh, you know, uh, Frank Cho. So her proportions were a little more, uh, you know, beefy uh but you know attractive at the same time so that was kind of like the 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 model that, uh, uh, that that's the basis that i was modeling my custom on right it's not 100 percent spot on to the frank cho uh version or anything like that uh it's just you know kind of like my inspiration um because there are several things with the suit that is not accurate um so i will preface by saying that this is version one i do have plans for a version two where um i'll speak a little further uh you know in the future about that uh but you know this was like my first you know like test run you could say for the character uh some features that uh, i ended up working in uh, into this uh sparked ideas for my version uh, you know my 2.0 you could say so this figure the basis is the siren figure that was released you know i want to say last year yeah last year definitely last year uh, uh she came with like a build a figure part for one of the reavers i forget uh the guy's name uh again i'll post some reference images and um so that's the the figure that I used uh, as the basis for this custom. Uh, she had the right body type. She had particularly the the hair that I would have that I particularly like, which is you know the f for a character that uh, flies and all of that, the flowy hair and all of that. It works great for this custom, uh, for this character in particular. And um, you know overall, it's just the the basic. And she has the the, the more modern articulation, the double jointed elbows. Uh, double jointed knees have always been there, but uh, you know, particularly the double jointed elbows and stuff like that. You know, the, the swivel at the bicep, something that they didn't have, you know, previously. And so this is a complete, full figure repaint, except for the face. The face I didn't need really to repaint anything. I just kept it, uh, except for you know, whiting out the eyes for the mask look. Because again, that's that what I was basing my 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 custom my custom on, which was the Frank Cho interpretation, where she, uh, you can only, it's almost like Batman, you know, you can only see the slits of his eyes and they're whited out. Um, but yeah, so the um, the custom, like I said, I pretty much painted everything in black, uh, head to toe. Uh, obviously, I took the figure apart and painted everything in black and then painted the skin tone over the black um, um there's no particular skin tone that i used you know i just it's a mix of colors that i so my custom skin tone trying to get something to match the uh already the color from the uh, from the face or the head sculpt i would should say and then uh you know just uh doing some modifications to the um to the figure itself just for better um 
for better uh, possibility. So let's take a closer look. Um, so right now I got her on a, on a stand. It's actually one of the McFarlane stands. So here's a close up. Let me explain the mask. So the mask, um, I, it, it is actually made up of heat shrink tubing. So what I ended up doing is I removed the hair piece. I have some, uh, I have I have the uh, the heat shrink that I use here just so you can get an idea right so this is the heat shrink tubing that I used so if I open it up it's uh the diameter is not that much right so it won't fit over the head right so what I ended up doing is removing the hair piece and then uh with some uh, pliers I stretched out I cut into I cut a piece, you know, something like this, something that would cover the upper half of most, most not mostly mostly the head, like from the mouth, from the nose and the mouth upwards. I uh, stretched out the heat shrink and then slid it over her head, and then once uh, I was able to get that uh, fitted, that's when I hit the uh, the heat shrink tubing with. Uh, hair dryer and the heat shrink did what it does and it shrunk and it molded itself into the shape of the face again from the from a little bit from below the nose upwards right so once the uh, heat shrink uh, 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 you know being a uh, contract and shape itself around the crevices and the shape of the of the head you know uh, i let it cool for a little bit and then just you know cut the shape of her mask which is again completely not accurate to any version <laughs> of hers um it's a, you it's a pretty small piece to you know, considering uh, the frail, I, I ended up having, having to do this process three, process three times because the, um, uh, once I started cutting and shaping the, um, the, the shape of the mask, um, the, uh, the heat shrink would just, you know, split. So it's very delicate and uh, I didn't want to fight with it too much uh to get the correct shape uh so that that's why i left it how i how it is uh but um for future for my version two i'm gonna apply the same principle but um just try and be a little more patient and try and get the mask a little more accurate uh, but that's basically what i did uh also you know cutting out the eye slits and then just like I had mentioned earlier, just whited out the eyes from uh, the uh, siren figure. And this, and the, um, so the, um, the, the, um, the suit, like I said, everything is, you know, painted. I used the VHT paint for plastics uh, as the black paint that I used. Um, and repainted the whole figure i i haven't I, I mean i didn't apply a clear or anything i like how shiny it looks because miss miss the miss marvel warbird costume does have some reflectiveness to it it's not like you could say like spandex right it's, it almost has like a latex look to it at least that's how it's usually depicted maybe it's some sort of leather right so I kept the shine, uh, the natural shine of the uh, paint uh, on the figure. The belt, her sash, I should say, is actually a uh, red electrical tape that I insert, uh, well, not inserted, I wrapped a um, bendy wire around uh, or encased the bendy wire in electrical tape. 
and uh, that's how I uh, am able to. Uh, let me just roll the figure. Mm. Yeah. So I am. That's how I'm able to get uh, posability out of the uh, of the sash, right? Um, it's almost like a twisty tie from you know, I don't know, your garbage bags or your um, um, red. I would say. So you can see here. That's where the wire is, right threaded through the middle. And all I did is just fold the uh, piece of electrical wire onto itself, right? Like a sandwich. Uh, so uh, that's all I did. It was fold the, uh, fold the, uh, the electrical wire onto itself. And all it is, all it is, is that I'm doing is just twist it around the, uh, her hip. And that's it. That's how it holds in place. And I'm able to pose it, you know, however I want. This is something that, um, I've, uh, something that I've mentioned in previous videos, as far as for, uh, for action figures, as particularly female figures or characters with long hair. I've mentioned this before. If you know companies w would be able to do something like this, and that they they could use the uh, like um, bendy, w w w there's some bendable. I've seen some figures that are like bendy figures, almost like stretch Armstrongs, but not necessarily stretch, but bendy figures. Um, that if they can implement some of that type of technology for hair. And so that they would be able to do something like this, you know, for instance, this piece of hair, oh, I'm sorry, this piece of hair, this chunk of hair over here on the sides, you know, how expensive would it be to try and um, get some bendy wire, bendy plastic in there so that we'd be able to move around the hair, right? And then, uh, all, again, the... Uh, so some of the modifications that I did for the figure as far as uh, for posability. Um, I modded the range in the legs by, uh, I don't have it here, let me just. Uh, I modded here, I, I using a Dremel I shaved, I've carved out a little deeper trench here so that the um, the stem of the ball joint, so that's the ball joint right there in black, uh, and this is the stem, so that when I, uh, and I also, okay, so let me start at the beginning. The crotch area, I slimmed the crotch area uh, so that it, it enables you to have the figure be able to cross her legs one in front of the other like this you know most people do that but you know particularly for females you know it looks a little more uh, feminine right uh, usually the characters are kept like this you know you can't pose them you can't close their legs anymore so by doing the trimming the the crotch area and a little more slight v shape that gives you the ability and by shaving down this area down here, carving out a, a notch so that the stem of the uh, ball joint, when you go and close the uh, the leg, you get a little deeper cut. Although it doesn't really reach it, but you know, it's that's that's the, the basic idea. And I did the same over at the top of her hip, although you can't really see. Oh, there, right, you can see right there on the top of the hip. So I did the same thing. So now she can split, do the splits, almost do the full splits, All right? But definitely a deeper uh, spread leg than before. The other thing that I did is, um, let me grab something else to point. Uh, the uh, hip area here on the um, on the torso piece, although this is one piece, I did shave off something of of the curve here. So that uh, she can uh, raise her legs, um, you know, all do it to a full ninety, all right, uh, ninety degrees, even a little higher than that, if you move the uh, the hip piece around. 
you can actually get higher. And then at the back, I, I shaved off a piece of the uh, her booty and, and um, made a, again like a cut, excuse me, like a, a V cut into her cheeks and down here at the bottom so that she can uh, bend her leg backwards. Because most, most Marble Legend figures don't have a lot of range going back. So by carving out a notch, you know, almost like a nest curve right here, going upwards into the cheek and then into the hip, it gives you the uh, a bigger range going backwards. I believe, yes, I also did something to give her a deeper ab crunch. You can tell because you have more exposure of the hump here for the um, for the mold. Because she does have a deeper ab crunch. And for the arms and everything, nothing, nothing was done. So she does have her regular range and all of that. Although I am getting some, uh, I'm gonna have to do some retouching. You can see there that the um, the clear protective clear that I applied isn't really uh, sticking uh, to the skin tone. You can see it's peeling off right there at the joint. So I'm gonna have to do some retouching. Let's take a look at her face. Get a closer look at the mask. You can see part of the mask is not sticking. So it's just, uh, I just use some regular glue to stick the, uh, the mask to the uh, face. But this right here is, uh, I need to put some dab of glue on there. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it was all just a matter of <clears throat> of finding the, um, I thought about plugging up the, the back end here, but I figured that since this is a character that flies and all that, I might use, I might find some those flight stands that have the plugs in the back, so I may use it to, uh, to, um, to pose this figure with, because she does look cool. You know, for a flying pose and all that. Oh, I did modify. Did I modify? I, I forget. I think I may have modified part of their neck so that she can look a little higher. But yeah, you know, um, you want to get her in those flying poses and all that. So I think. Uh, The, um, by not plugging up those uh, holes there in her back. Um, it's um, the right call. All right, so yes. Um, the um so uh, again i've wanted to have a, a version of this character in my collection for a while i'm hoping i would be able to get a chance to pick up the uh, target exclusive that we'll be releasing later this year um so but this is like my uh, uh my backup you know in case i don't um but again just doing some retouches and all of that and um uh, and um and she'll be good to go. But again, um, I do have plans for a version 2.0. So one of the things that I was attempting to do with this custom, let me, uh, again, using the uh, heat shrink as an experiment. Let me see if I have a picture of this. Okay, so this, again, some heat shrink. This was supposed to be during my first early stages of customizing this figure. Uh, this is her um, arm wrap or, you know, sleeve, you can say. 
Um, but the uh, heat shrink is a little too thick. Uh, this is before I try I try to stretch out and thin out the uh, the plastic a little more, and I did try a second time with the heat shrink tubing uh, stretched out so that it, it would thin out a little bit. Um, but it still kind of hampered her um, her posability. So what I'm thinking of doing for version two. Uh, for her arm sleeves, for her thigh bo thigh high boots, and for her uh, one piece costume, is use vinyl wrap. Uh, you know, I don't know uh, how it looks like applied to action figures and all of that, but um, I mean, I've seen it with um, on, um, on on cars, and it looks good enough but I just don't know how thick the vinyl wrap is so uh, if it's just as thick as this or even hard I mean if it's for cars I imagine it's gonna be a little thicker but they do sell like sprayable vinyl uh, you know that I don't, I don't know I've seen it and I've seen it at the auto zone so every time every time I go and pick up paint supplies uh, for uh, customs um, I see it there, and I just don't know if it's going to work, you know, particularly around the joints, right? I'm thinking if I spray it on, it's going to seep in, seep into the, uh, the joints, and that's what I don't want. I want to hide the joints, you know, so that's where I got the idea for the vinyl wrap, but again, I don't know how thick the vinyl wrap is going to be, so that's... um. That's something that I'm going to look into, into in the future. All right, so that's about it for this um, video. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.